Sometime in the future, a star by the name of Gliese 710 is going to pass by within our solar system and possibly do something to it. Now we know for a fact that it's going to pass relatively close to our sun, but we don't really know what exactly will occur. Today we're going to investigate what will happen and you'll find out if our planet Earth is in danger. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Alright, so what exactly is going to happen and when is it going to happen? Well, in about uh, 10 to possibly 15 million years, a star by the name of Gliese 710 is going to pass within about a light year distance of our sun. Now, that's not really close, but it's not really far either when it, when it comes to stars. I'm going to show you how close it is. And there's actually a lot of different Gliese stars because Gliese is the name of a, one of the telescopes that actually looks for them. Uh, but unfortunately, this particular star is not in a catalog. So I'm going to just pick a random one that is kind of similar. I think this one is, looks pretty close. Um, and just to show you how far away it is. So let's just zoom in for a second. So this is Earth. This is Sun. And I'm going to show you how far away this, this is actually going to be. Um, we're talking about a distance of approximately one light year away which is it's far it's actually pretty far but it is with it's right about here uh, but it is within uh, the so-called um, Oort's cloud which is basically where a lot of our comets are and the reason why it's kind of important is because if this star actually passes through the field where all our com comets are located some of them might end up coming uh, toward our um, our inner solar, solar system and then possibly even smacking into earth but let's actually just talk about the star itself before we continue. So uh, this particular star is actually a little bit smaller and a little bit um, less massive than our sun. As a matter of fact, its mass is only about 60% of our sun and its uh, radius is also um, about 67% of, of our sun. So I'm going to show you our sun for comparison here. And that's our sun right next to it. So it's, it's, you can see it's, it's a little bit smaller. But currently, this particular star is actually much, much farther away from our sun. As a matter of fact, it is currently, and I'm going to show you this to you again by placing yet another star, just for a comparison. I'll just take a wolf right here. Uh, it is currently at a distance of about uh, 63, 64 light years away. So it is actually really far right now. But um, if you um, if you actually look at it, or if, when we look at it, um, we actually can see that it's sort of always in, in the same uh, location. In other words, it is actually constantly moving toward our sun. It's essentially we're staring at its uh, vector of uh, motion. So it is basically going this way toward our sun. And now we're not exactly sure where it's going to pass, but mathematical calculations show that it is um, going to be within this sort of range and within the next uh, 10 or so million years. And even though right now it's actually not very bright, as a matter of fact, you will probably not even see it in the night sky without a very powerful telescope. By the time that it gets to this location, it is going to be so bright that you'll be easily able to, to see it in the night sky. And it's going to be even as bright as some of the more, uh, more popular stars like Antares and famous Polaris, or also known as the Northern Star. But obviously 10 million years is really, really long. And uh, by the time that uh, this star will actually arrive into our solar system, uh, many of us uh, will obviously be gone. But it's possible that humanity is still around, so we may need to figure out if this is going to affect us. So what we're going to do is, let's actually see if it does affect us. We're going to start a new simulation and the simulation I'm going to be using is this one here, solar system with non-moons. So this is the one simulation that actually has quite a lot of um, various dwarf planets and various um, trans-Neptunian objects that are basically all over the place. And some of them are actually pretty far away, like for example, Sedna. And uh, this is actually really good for us to use because we'll get to see if any of them will lose their orbit and we'll still be able to see what happens on Earth as well by basically clicking on Earth and looking at, at its um, various uh, statistics here. So for example, things like temperature, uh, motion, and, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do now is basically just throw a star that is very similar in size to uh, Glia 710. And we're going to throw it at a distance of about one light year away from the sun. We're going to wait for it to pass. And then we're going to look back here and see what happens. And just to make this a little bit more 
interesting. What I'm going to also add is I'm going to add a bunch of um, comet-like asteroids orbiting around the sun at a distance of about, let's just say this far. So this is about a thousand or so astronomical units. So it's not too far away. It's actually uh, a lot closer than the actual star is going to be, but it's still um, far enough that um, if there are any comets and rocks in this region and they get affected by uh, uh, the passage of the star, this may actually suggest to us that, you know, maybe, just maybe we might be in danger. And so let's go into the rings uh, simulation right here. We're going to choose the distance of about 1000 astronomical units to let's just say about 1100 astronomical units and let's add another one a little bit farther away just to see if there's actually going to be any kind of per perturbations and changes in these particular um comets or asteroids so okay so now we're going to go back a little bit farther away and launch a star that I'm going to change in a second. And this is about one light year away from um, from Earth. We're just going to change this particular value to 0.6 and change its name to Glia 710. I also want to increase its speed actually. So it's going to be moving at a much faster velocity because we wanted to actually pass through the solar system a little bit faster than than this just because we don't really want to wait for it uh to uh, to fly for too long anyway so it's it's sort of uh coming toward us it's right there and now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to earth and see what happens. We're also going to return to these rings in a second. Unfortunately, the coloring of the rings didn't, didn't work out as I planned. They're all kind of black, but we'll get to look at them later. Let's go to Earth and just take a look at, I guess, things like temperature. I think temperature is a pretty good indicator of, it, of um, you know, if anything is going wrong uh, with our planet. So if I click on uh, the temperature, surface temperature right here, and if I change this, to let's just say about thousand years it will show me a graph of the um the actual temperature on our planet um and we'll also take a look at the orbit afterwards as well so let's just wait for uh, this star to to pass uh, for some reason the texture of these um asteroids is showing when i zoom out but as soon as i uh, as soon as I look at them from the top, it suddenly turns black again. Anyway, let's just ignore them for now. And so where is that star? It's definitely coming and we're going to just accelerate time a little bit more and wait for it to pass and see if anything changes. So let's just patiently wait. So here it comes. Um, I'm going to remove this for a second. We're going to zoom in to the solar system here and uh, right around the, the time that it gets to the plane where the um, uh, the solar system plane right here this is where it's going to be at the closest distance from the sun and this is when we should start looking at if, if any of these asteroids actually get out of orbit or if they start moving in a strange way and so far it looks like nothing is really happening so here it comes this is a distance of about almost one light a year away and i can actually now slow down a little bit Let's change its speed to about 100 kilometers per second. Uh, we're going to wait for it to, to pass by really slowly so that it basically affects as many ob objects as it can because this is the closest distance. And at this point, we can also start looking at other things like the orbits. So if any of the orbits start changing, it means something is happening here. And we currently have, uh, this is like 1.4 months per second. And to be honest, nothing is really changing, I think. Nothing, is re nothing really looks different to me. If one of the orbits suddenly becomes really elliptical, that's when you know the gravity is actually influencing something, or the gravity of this of the star is actually influencing something. But uh, okay, let's okay, something is happening here. What what what, uh, what dwarf planet is this? Okay, looks like Sedna is getting some sort of an influence because its orbital period is decreasing. So it's actually, it's, uh, it's apoapsis, its highest uh, uh, part of its orbit is dropping, but now it's actually going up again. And I think this is not actually because of the star. I, I've seen that before. That's, it's an interaction with some of these inner objects. Um, it's not really due to the star, because I've seen this even when there's nothing else in, um, in this particular region of space. Um, so it looks like Glia 710 is not really doing anything to us. I've noticed that none of these asteroids, and if you can see them right here, none of them actually change anything. They're still in the same sort of vicinity, still in the same location. So it's very likely that when Glia 710 comes for a visit in 10 million years, 
even if it disturbs one of the comets, it will still very unlikely do anything to our planet. The chances of a collision will not really improve by much. And as a matter of fact, uh, approximately 7 million years ago, there was another star that passed by a little bit farther away from Gliese 710 at a distance of about 10 light years. And this star is actually much more massive. It's about five times the mass of sun. So it could have had a lot more effect. And I'm gonna simulate this as well. Let's see if anything happens as well. This star was called Algol. It's a very bright star. You can see it in the, in the night sky. And Algol passed by um, within about 10 light years away. So it's around right here. So we're gonna launch Algol at a very, very high speed as well. And Algol is going to try to disturb our solar system as well and so here comes algo it's going to pass by uh relatively close uh, to the sun but obviously 10 light years away is not that close it's actually twice the distance of the closest sun uh, currently to us which is um alpha centauri or it's actually a triple star uh but nevertheless uh, let's see if anything changes so we're still looking at these asteroids we're still looking at things like um temperature and orbital motion of our planet so if anything changes here then we're in trouble if nothing changes then obviously nothing will happen now the reason why i wanted to show you how algo doesn't really change anything and i'm kind of spoiling this for you but it's very likely that nothing will change uh, the reason why i'm showing you this is because we now know that um approximately seven million years ago nothing really serious happened so if these stars pa pass by close to our sun and if they actually cause some sort of a cat catastrophic uh, disaster on our planet we would have actually seen it in inside the fossil deposits there might have been some sort of a really large extinction event but nothing really happened 7.3 million years ago as a matter of fact uh, the closest nearest extinction was 65 million years ago which was obviously many more years uh, before Algol even uh, came for a visit. So even despite uh, this particular star having a uh, much larger mass, uh, I believe its actual mass is about 5.8 uh, masses of sun, but here for some reason it's only four. Uh, so even though it's much more massive uh, than the sun, it actually didn't really affect our solar system, despite being relatively close. And except for Algo and except for Gliese 710, we can't really see of any other stars that may have passed by uh, close to us. And if they did pass, it, it was actually very likely to have been many years ago. So what it, this basically suggests to us and, and should also uh, show you as well is that uh, the passage of stars um, close to our sun is actually, first of all, very rare. And second of all, when they do actually come close to us, they don't change much. There's really almost no effect. So you'll see that when Algol gets here, uh, the rings that I set up here, they'll still be there. And uh, none of the orbits will change. Uh, Sedna is changing its orbit, but it's for some other reasons. And uh, Earth will still have the same temperature, same orbital parameters, and it will still be just as habitable as it was before I started the simulation. And so it looks like this is one of the closest passages that we'll have to our sun. So this is about 10 light years, just under 10 light years away. Uh, and if we zoom into our sun, let's start with these asteroids we've placed. And look at that. The rings are still there. Nothing is different. Uh, none of them changed their orbit to, to come closer to our um, inner solar system. None of them actually were affected at all. Sudden is still there. Everything is still just as it should be. And if I zoom into Earth and I look at it, I'll see that the climate here looks kind of normal, just as it was before. So we have winters, we have summers, there's green pastures everywhere, lights, and everyone seems to be still alive. So in other words, uh, these stars, when they, they actually come within one or possibly uh, two light years away from our sun, don't have much effect. So even if there are actual comets in, uh, in that range so far away from our sun, the chances of them to actually come back to the inner solar system are still very, very, very low. Not to mention that any kind of a collision would be practically almost impossible. So, 
So hopefully this was actually good news for you. So now you know that even when the stars or very massive objects uh, decide to come closer to our sun, nothing will really change for us. We'll still be around. And the worst thing that can happen to us is probably something from within our planet or possibly just we might actually destroy our planet ourselves. Other than that, I don't think any of the stars or any of the asteroids or comets will actually do any damage anytime soon. Anyway, so hopefully you enjoyed this little video about what happens when Glia 710 decides to come for a visit in about 10 million years from now. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it with your friends, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like it as well. There's more videos about space coming in the future and there's going to be a lot more videos on math, science and other fun subjects where I'm going to be teaching you various things using video games. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video, game you later guys and as always, bye bye. Now, what would happen if I actually enable this button? Oh, it went supernova. How unusual. Am I going to have a supernova coming toward, toward my sun now? And this, of course, means that if there is a supernova within the uh, distance of about 10 light years, we are going to be in a lot of trouble. Even though it's going to look very beautiful for a while, we're then going to all die. And then within several thousand years, when the supernova gets to our solar system, our Earth turns into this. A beautiful bright bowl in the sky that is a completely molten body in space. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye bye.